G'day everyone, welcome to X Recite. I'm Chrissy. thanks for joining me. In this video, I just want to introduce the soft tools and what they look like and the simple strokes that can be used. The surface I'm using is pastel mat. In the future, I'll demonstrate how the pan pastels layer on different papers, but that's another video. So for the purposes of this exercise, I will show you the soft tools and sponges that are available. They are for the sponges. Uh, you have the round, uh, the big oval, the angle slice round, the angle slice flat. Uh, they are dense with a unique semi-absorbent micropore sponge material which holds the pastel beautifully and is used for the cover and is used sorry is used cut for covering uh, large to larger areas. And of course um, alongside that there are the uh, the sponge bars which is the the wedge, the point, the round oval and the flat. And then we have the knives uh, and the knife and the sponge applicators. They mimic the bristle brushes, and they are, uh, there are four types. There is the uh, round, the flat, the oval, and the point. And then you have the little applicators, which are terrific for details. I can't go further without mentioning pan pastels themselves. Essentially, pan pastels are a pastel in a pan. They are designed to be used with soft tools and sponges, of which I'll talk about in detail in a few videos to come. But for now, I will show you the soft tools that are available. A lot of thought has gone into the making of pan pastels and soft tools. The manufacturers of this wonderful product have designed this uh, medium uh, to be highly pigmented, able to mix and make new colors, which is a key feature, something which I use all the time, and working with little to no dust. On the back of each pan, you will see pigment information, light fast details and where they're made. Yes, there's a handful of uh, ways to apply pan pastels. They can be used on their own and or with other mediums. Uh, many use pan pastels for backgrounds and applying a base in preparation for other mediums such as coloured pencil and pastel pencils, uh, which are the most common. As well as uh, I've seen some wonderful artwork that's been produced using pan pastels alone. You can use the soft tools on many surfaces, including ingress paper, which is like a non-sanded surface, um, a sanded surface, uh, and depending on what surface you use, uh, sadly, the grittier the surface, along with heavy application, um, the sponges will fray. So this is something to keep in mind. But if you use a light pressure, your sponges will last a lot longer. So while working, always use a paper towel to wipe your tool and sponge to avoid contaminating your pan or surface. The sponges can be, uh, can be washed with warm soapy water and reused multiple times and that's depending um, on the surface and the colour used. And you rinse well and allow to air dry for 24 hours. It's really interesting to see the kind of shapes that you can achieve with each different sponge. Uh, I 
my, one of my favorites is the the round uh, they're the ones that I probably use the most the the larger round ones that is and I've covered huge amount of areas um, in some of my um, in some of my paintings the flat sponges uh, I found uh, were particularly useful when I was doing say for example you know lakes and rivers and uh, reflections uh, one one or two small strokes in a downward position uh, you can achieve some wonderful results this way
this clip is uh, a part of a video where I show you how to build layers of pastel. Um, with a bit of practice uh, and a few gentle strokes, uh, you see the use of the round knife applicator making soft clouds. Uh, and what a great tool for blending and moving the pastel.